I've learned some new features recently using the Insta360 Studio. Some have been added in recent software updates, but some have literally always been there and I didn't even notice. First things first to start us off, you can now see new information before you export a clip. So click on the export button and when the export settings box appears in the bottom left of the box, you can now see the estimated file size of a clip before you export it. Previously, you were only able to see this information once a clip was exported. You can also see the file size information from the export history which before you were only able to see the clip duration. Staying on the theme of exporting and you're now able to export in ProRes 422. Previously, you were only able to export in H.264 or H.265. If you're unsure about what export settings to use, check out my best export settings video where I talk through what I think are the best export settings. If you've shot a clip in 60 frames per second, but you decide you want to export it in 30, when you've clicked on export and the export settings box has appeared, go to the frame rate drop down menu and you'll see here you have the option to export it in 60 or 30. Obviously, if you've shot in 30, you won't be able to export in 60, but if you've shot in 60, you can export in 30 or 60. Let's say you've got a problem with the stitch line, like you can see here, this black line here is essentially the stitch line. You can go to the stitching tab, and once you've messed around with the optical flow stitching or the dynamic stitching, and you've still got issues like we have here, if you go to the custom option, a slider will appear. If you whack it all the way up to the max, you can see that the stitch line has essentially disappeared. What that's done is that's blurred out the stitch line, so it's basically invisible. You can just about see it, but if you didn't know it was there, you really wouldn't be able to tell it was there. If I bring it back down to zero, you can see clearly where the line is but if I push it back up to seven it has uh, blurred it out so yeah if you've got any stitch line issues just whack up the custom slider to the max and it should blur it out. You can animate photos through the Insta360 Studio. Once you've got your photo selected at the top you've got 360 photo and next to that is animate. Once you've clicked on animate a uh, preset box should appear but if it doesn't this little arrow to the bottom left click on that and then the preset box will pop out you've got five different presets you can see the preview of each of the presets um, through obviously each of the preview windows so if i double click on one it will send it to the photo and then just play it like a normal video clip so you can see that's a kind of um, 360 pan type effect if we go to the last one that looks like it's going to be a spin to the kind of planet effect, pretty cool. If you wanted to then export this, it will export as a uh, normal video clip. So you just simply go to export as you would normally, change all the settings and then export it. So it's now gone, so it's then gone from a still photo to a moving video. If you wanted to uh, export all five of the presets, just go to select all and then go to export and it will do a batch export, change all the settings and then press start export. The software can do some auto reframing for you. If you get your mouse and hover it over each of the uh, preview boxes to the left hand side, you'll see the first option is auto frame. If you click on that, it will just take a few minutes depending on how big uh, the clip is to uh, auto frame. And then essentially what it will do is it will give you various different clips of the same clip that it's framed in different ways. So once it's done, uh, a preset box should appear like the photo presets. But if it doesn't, then again, press this uh, arrow to the bottom left and then you get all of these clips that appear. So the first one is uh, the default. So this is the only clip out of all of these clips that you're actually able to edit because this is the original one. So you can add in your keyframes, etc, etc. And then if you go to the first one, uh, this is the original clip, but it is not um, it's not, you're not able to edit it. So you're not able to add any keyframes to it. So if I just mute that and I play it, you can see that essentially all this is, is the uh, original clip just facing the direction that we were walking. So it hasn't actually done like any reframing as such to it. But if we go to the next one, 
you can see when I played that, uh, that it has moved it a bit, uh, slightly. Let's go to the next one and then play that. So you can see here, it's kind of locked onto these people and it's moving the angle round to lock onto them. And then if we go to the next one and play that, probably do the same. Yeah, you can see it's moved it round to lock onto them as well. They were very interested in the camera. A lot of people in Barcelona were, to be fair. Uh, but yeah, so you've got you've got all these different options. Yeah, there's quite a lot here. So you've got a, a lot to choose from. And then if you uh, wanted to export, obviously, this one that we're currently on, just go to export like you normally would, change the settings and export it. Or if you wanted to export all of them, just go to select all and then go to export and it will do another batch export, uh, change the settings and then press start export. So just one thing to note though, like I said, any of these ones that have been auto reframed, you can't edit anything on them, which is why all of the keyframing options has disappeared. If you wanted to take a snapshot of the current preview that is showing on the preview window, you can just go to the bottom right of the preview box and click on take snapshot, choose what you want it to be called and where you want it to be saved and it will literally take a snapshot of the preview window and save it as a picture. If you wanted to speed up your editing process, you can learn all or some of the keyboard shortcuts. If you go to the edit tab at the top panel, uh, you'll see this list of keyboard shortcuts will appear from adding a keyframe to clearing, to trimming, to zooming, to taking a snapshot. Um, obviously I'm using a Mac, so these are just for Mac, but if you were using a PC, you'll still have shortcuts that would just be slightly different. So yeah, so learning some or all of these could definitely speed up your editing process. If you didn't want to edit your videos through the Insta360 Studio and you wanted to edit them straight in your normal editing software like Premiere or Final Cut, you can download the plugin from the Insta360 website and then you will be able to literally edit your 360 videos inside Premiere or Final Cut without having to do it in the studio and then exporting and then re-importing and then exporting again. Uh, in the bottom left, you can see you've got the Premiere and Final Cut uh, buttons. Um, when you click on one of them, you'll get taken to the Insta360 website. Uh, here you're able to download the plugin, then you can install it. And then yeah, it will definitely speed up your uh, editing process if you're able to edit all the 360 videos inside either Premiere or Final Cut without having to do any exporting or editing in the uh, Insta360 Studio. One thing I would say though is the plugin uh, can be quite laggy if you don't have a uh, fast system, a fast operating system, a powerful operating system is probably the word. So yeah, so maybe play around with it first, but if you haven't got a powerful system to be able to handle the plugin, then it could do the reverse of what you're trying to do and actually slow you down rather than speed you up. But yeah, the option is there if you want to play around with it. Let's say you wanted to export different sections of the same clip. The easiest and quickest way to currently do this is to use the project management option. So click on project management and go to create new project and a new project will be created based off the same clip. So let's say we wanted this section of the clip to do some editing and then exporting on, we can do that, but all whilst we've still got project one, which is this section that we've already edited and exported. So you can do that for however many projects you want for the same clip. Always make sure you keep your software up to date to make sure you're able to use all of the features.